I'm Joe Blakely, and this is Barking Dog Brew House, and with me is Josh McGrath. Now, Hello. if we had, <laughs> had Zoom, like, I don't know, nine years ago, eight years ago, when I started doing beer reviews and then stopped, like, we'd be able to do this more often, but thanks to COVID-19, we can Zoom together and talk about beers. Yeah. I think we, we've always kind of discussed doing one together, but it would have involved me driving to you, which is not impossible, but timing would have had to work out. Yeah. 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 And then it's way, just way more fun to just drink anyways. So that's true. Yeah. Um, so I'm sticking with victory. Um, they're a sour monkey. I, the thing is with the, the whole quarantine situation is with the beer stores in New Jersey, um, you got a curbside pickup and um, their websites are god awful and you can't tell what, you know, like what's in stock, what's not in stock. So I've been getting like the same variety packs and um, the Sour Monkey, like I, I like the Golden Monkey, but Sour Monkey, I don't know why. Like the first one I had, I was like, oh, this is so bad. Like, I don't like sour beer. And then you're like, no, this is not so bad. It's pretty good. I think that's how it goes. I think it's that first sip is like, woof, it's sour. <laughs> and then after that is like, I actually like this. Like you kind of get that taste. I think it's kind of like the same way when I first drank IPAs, like you get that bitterness out of the way on them. And then it's just like, wow, I really like this. Yeah. And you ever find yourself like, so I just finished the, the Easy Ringer session and like, it's so like light compared to what I'm used to. But like, do you ever find that you've had, like if you've had a, a heavier like a double IPA or something that's really hoppy and, and like has a lot of um it's higher in the IBUs like you go to drink a session like that you're like oh this tastes like water <laughs> like it <Yes>. doesn't <laughs> it's not the same I've, I've also gone the other way where like if you're at a um I remember one one instance we were in the city and we were drinking from like it was like pictures of Stella was it was the deal for for the day and so we were drinking that and then we went somewhere else and I got like a, a better beer. I don't remember what it was. And it was like, wow, this has a lot more flavor than that did. This is a lot better. <laughs> this tastes it kind of shocks you a little bit at first, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I know that feeling. Um, so I'm going to open up mine. Do you, do you have a beer that you're going to. Uh, I can, I can grab one. Give me, yeah, a, grab give me one second. Yeah. Grab this beer. I, My AirPods are with me, so you're going to hear all of my noises. That's fine. I've done work you on know what? Zoom. I'm going to go, hmm. Let's go with this one. getting his beer i'm gonna pour mine should i be getting a glass too or should i uh just go oh, you can drink it from the can i just brought a okay. glass i brought i brought two options actually i brought uh, a, a connecticut classic which fuzzy baby. well known fuzzy baby ducks and then a local also connecticut from stanford which is where i live <laughs> um beacon which is actually the the can is stanford harbor and it has the can lighthouse you, on it, which is pinpoint, actually right outside my window. Yeah, I was going to say, can you pinpoint your apartment building on the can? Uh, I think it's made of buildings use it. in the background. <laughs> but uh, I would guess if it had to be one, it would be like that one. Over there. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it's like, you know, snakes don't have parts. But if I did say you're having a part of the snake, I'd say the knee. <laughs> <laughs> I think for the purpose for the purpose of this, I'll stick with the fuzzy just because it's yeah timeless it's fuzzy. I wish we could Whatever. get it here, but we can't. Oh, the fuzzy. Yeah, I I don't know I don't know what half fulls um, distribution looks like. They're I mean they don't have quite as many and, and well known beers, but they've really stepped their game up in the last uh, couple years. Uh, and they they they've been releasing some pretty good. Uh, beers throughout this quarantine and they have uh, their version of the all together the other half beer uh, that all the breweries are collaborating on this coming out this week and i have my pre-order in for that so that's pretty cool so i guess it yeah. started right around 
right when the quarantine started. Made sense about. Yeah, I, I think I first started hearing about All Together a couple weeks ago, um, which other half started. And then a lot of the breweries in this area have, have done theirs and released it already. Um, I think Heffel is one of the last ones too. I don't know if they did that on purpose. It was like a strategic, like not cannibalize each other. Right. So did, did they, in that instance, did somebody come up with like the recipe and then they just spread, like shared the recipe and they all brewed it? Like, that would be my guess. I mean, that's pretty I, cool. Yeah. And, and every, I think each brewery is choosing where to donate the proceeds. So I think theirs are going to like the local restaurant community. Um, I know I've seen other ones are doing it too. Hospitals and others are doing. Um, yeah, that's like the yeah, one like thing that. that, like, obviously, raising money for any good cause is great. But like, the foods, you know, bars and stuff are just getting crushed right now. Like, just, yeah. I mean, you survive on takeout orders, but liquor sales and beer sales are your bread and butter, and you can't. I mean, you, some places do to go like we got uh i got a six pack delivered and sangria with my mexican food and that was pretty cool the girl forgot yeah, really the six pack and i i suspected that she was just trying to keep it and and have a little party but uh-oh can't put it past me <laughs> she gave you she got you the sangria too so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh first sip of this sour Yes. <laughs> it's like, uh, but it's funny because the Golden Monkey and even this one is tattered as a Belgian ale. So like Belgian ales have that um, characteristic of being like spicy. If that makes sense. They have like, a, I don't want to say like burn, but kind of a burn. Yeah. Like that crispiness. Yeah. It's clean though. Like super, I mean, because it's tart, it like feels like it just, there's no lingering, goes away. Like it's tart, but then it's gone. And it makes you want okay. to more. That's always, that's always dangerous, but good. <laughs> yeah, especially when they, you know, like it's a triple, so you're nine, nine, five, you know. Dream community. Yeah, that's up there. You're seeing stars. <laughs> I've done that a few nights. <laughs> That's what's scary with with some of the the doubles and, and and triples that are coming out now. They're making them so like fruity and hazy that you don't get that bitterness anymore. That kind of punches you in the face, and it's like I have to drink this slowly. And they they become very drinkable, and they can sneak up on you. Yeah. Not that I'm complaining. No. <laughs> and it's like I guess if you wanted more of a session for a Belgian, you could go with a saison which is like, you know, farmhouse ale, but um, those are, they got funkiness to them, which is pretty cool. Like, they're kind of like, to me, it's a hard comparison, but like uh, eating a dry aged steak, you get like weird, nutty flavor. Like that's what you're supposed to get from Belgians and Saison's. Like it's supposed to be wild yeast and stuff like that. To make it interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I have to dive in more into into different varieties. I, I I would like to learn more. I'd like to be a person who can point out like what this taste is, what that taste is. Where I am right now is like I know I like this. Yeah, and, like I could take, I can sip a beer and be like, there's something in there I really like, or there's something in there that I dislike. I will continue to drink to see if I like it more as I go. But like, <laughs> um, you know, I I. I I've definitely developed my list of like, these are my go-tos. These are the ones that I do like. And then this one I've had before, I could see it being good. It's not my favorite. Yeah. It's like, for me, I, I, I noticed that the trend was all I was getting are IPA variety packs as some form of an IPA, but like in the world of craft beer, and I'm not even going to call it craft beer anymore because everybody drinks it now pretty much. Like, there's so many different kinds that you can have, but it's almost like you overload your senses with like, oh, like, okay. I, yeah. You know. I, I heard somebody saying that like, I don't even remember where it was, um, that IPAs are like, you know, obviously they're, they're popular and, and there's a lot of hype around a lot of them, which this, this is one of those beers that had, had and still has hype around it. Um, 
they, you know, if you, if you make a mistake, it's easy to kind of correct it by just like re, you know, adding more hops <laughs> and yeah. like just, there's so much going on in there that like, it's not as difficult to create a, a good beer where with, with some of the other styles, it's a little more difficult and more of a, more of a work of art to get it perfect. Right. Yeah. And that's like the thing too, is like, I wouldn't put fuzzy or, um, sip of sunshine or, you know, like the big hitters that are like cult classics. Like I wouldn't put them in a cookie cutter mold because they're not, but like if somebody who didn't like IPAs, like you probably go with like the founders all day, some, you know, Oh yeah. Ste like a stepping stone, like goose Island IPA. Like now that's kind of owned by InBev, So it's not really craft beer anymore. But They say that they're not touching anything, but I, I, I can, I mean, well, my dad was, has always been a big Goose Island guy. Um, and he actually made a comment the other night. He's like, I don't, I, after drinking, you know, some of these other beers, I don't, I went back to it and it's not my favorite anymore. Like it's something about it tastes different. I don't know if it's maybe that he's, you know, expanded or if it's just that maybe there is a change in it. Yeah. I, I, it's barking dog. There we go. <laughs> Official. But the, the, um, Okay. <laughs> the, uh, like, to me, they've become, um, it's just economical. Like, for a 15-pack of Goose Island, which is such a weird number, like, a 15-pack? Like, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know where they came up with it. I guess half of a 30-pack. But um, to me, that's cheaper and more beer than some six packs from certain brewers and when it, yeah when weighing dollars to donuts it's, it's well that's what's, what's cheaper <laughs> i think that's that's i i mean you, you were talking about the the curbside pickup at a liquor store before and for me like if i go somewhere and my wife knows this um if i go shopping for beer like if i'm in a store i can be in there for a very long time like oh, yeah. going through looking up the beers <laughs> if i haven't heard of it before um but then price comes into play so there are, might be like a four pack that i see that it, that looks interesting but it's like 22 dollars. i'm gonna pass that up for something that's 14 12 dollars right um which could be just as good it probably is just as good if not better just may not have that that level of hype or or the name of the brewery on it that's as as well known yeah. Especially being so close to the city, we get a lot of the New York City ones that are a little, a little highly priced. Yeah, and to be honest, like I, I don't know. You're you're in a lucky area for craft, bro. Like for good beer, like you have a good beer scene by you. Um, New Jersey's okay. There's some, there's some brands that are not bad, uh, and I've worked close to a few of them. Cricket Hill and magnify pretty good and then down in south jersey there's Kane, and um and then in ridgefield park there's bolero snort but bolero snort some of their beers are like really odd like they they <laughs> brew it with like lucky charms and it, it's just it's some of their stuff is just too off the deep end for me yeah, but there's a scene for that, you know. There's yeah. probably people that that are looking for that. I think it's more of a chance, but but like you're lucky because you have, you know, Nebco and half half full, and you know all the. Yeah, I mean we've got. Can I? I mean I I think part of it is that, I mean New England has New England Brewing Company has its name out there and, and people know it and, um you know we have two roads which is massive right up you know right down the road from there and um even you know, a couple of not, local places what's up even vermont you're not like terribly far yeah you can take a day trip up there and and, and hit some of those some of those breweries i mean it'd be a full day but it would be right. a, it would be a nice a nice scenic trip yeah. um you can go to lawson's or long trail yeah uh even head up you, i mean you can get up to, we can get up to stowe in like five hours so you can hit some of those guys up there even further up you can get to like uh Hill Farmstead and those guys, but um, the what I've found is that like most of the breweries in this area, even like the smaller name ones, still have a beer or two that I really like. 
And I think that's what's what the bigger thing the bigger thing is and makes it easier to go shopping for beer is that like you know, maybe New England doesn't have some of their top tier ones, which is hard because they have a ton of like really good beers. Um, Mm -hmm. But I can still go to another brewery in the area and get something that I know I like. Um, And some of them are my like, uh, no worries up in in hand. It makes a beer called Dosey Doe, which is is one of my go tos. Like if it's on tap, I'll probably get that over some of the other bigger names. Um, I just I, I I don't know. I think that's part of it is like, you have to kind of try them out and give them a chance and you'll find something you like out there. So. Yeah. And then now circling back out of all those, and you said you wanted to learn a little more into the flavors of beer and stuff, but do you, um, do you have a favorite hop? Uh, I'd have to go with Citra. Um, Yeah, just because I know, um, I mean, this is uh, Fuzzy's all Citra, um, but I tend to like the be- beers that have Citra. Um, I, I don't know. I, I would say that that's, that's my favorite. It's kind of nice and refreshing on like a hot day in the summer. It's a beer. It's, it's something you can drink kind of all the time. Um, I like beer. I, I don't know. I, it, there's been a nice mix of, of hops in some of the beers that I've been drinking lately. So it's, it's, it's good. I always like mosaic. I've always liked um, like galaxy hops and things like that. But um, yeah, it, I always tend to come back to the citra, the citra beers. Yeah. It's funny too. Like when you, the, the limited amount of homebrewing I have done. And then like when you first get these kits, you get like pellet hops and those are like compressed and they smell when you put them in and it's cool and stuff. But then once you get into flower hops and like, that's when you can like grab them. Like you never seen the commercial with a uh, Jim Crow like falls. Well, yeah. and he like smushes it and he like smells it. Like immediately. That's what I did when I got my first like flower hop. <laughs> See, I kind of want to just do that and not actually brew a beer, but like just play with the hops. <laughs> like, you could, like if you go to a brew shop, like you could, they have them that you can do that where you can like get a sense of what they smell like. Yeah. I actually, I do have that clone kit uh, for, for sip of sunshine, which my brothers and my wife and my sister-in-law got me uh, for my birthday and they got me the whole kit. And that was the perfect time to do it. (laughs) Yeah. It is sitting in in my basement at my mom's house still. Um, So I have to, I have to get that going. Uh, Definitely have to get some more yeast, but <laughs> yeah, the yeast is probably, <laughs> but that's not hard to find at least for bread. Know. bread yeast, a little different. Yeah. We've been going through that. <laughs> Looking for some bread yeast. To that. Oh yeah. My brother-in-law actually bought, uh, I think it was like two pounds of yeast and like 50 <laughs> pounds of flour. Well, that's why I think, I think we saw like a two pound thing of yeast and it was like the shipping was made it double the price. So it's not even worth it. It's, it's just, what are you going to do? Yeah. I'm going to grab another beer is what I'm going to do. So I'll be right back. Go for it. What are you doing over there? I'm back. Talking to you. Yeah. What do you got this time? Hot Bullet, double IPA nice. from uh, Sierra Nevada. Yeah, you talk. You you were talking before about. I mean, you can pour it and, and talk about it, and then I then I'll add. No, that's all right. I was gonna say you were talking before about like the step the stepping stones of getting into this this whole thing and. Um, Sierra Nevada is definitely one of those, those breweries that, that kind of got me started. I would say like that and some of the other West Coast, like Lagunitas and. Oh and yeah. Yeah. I like mean, Ballast Point. Yeah. Those like, and even 21st Amendment, they have some other beers that you can try. That was the first time I think I ever had a beer, uh, that was like fruit bait, you know, like the hell or high watermelon. Uh, which I didn't really care for, but I appreciate as a I would, sentiment. 
I think for me, I, I remember going with you to uh, ship down the street from you. And I think that's really where, where I got into um, trying different ones. I, you know, I'd had like dogfish head, which is another one. Right. Um, you know, the various dogfish heads. Um, but going there and, and I think it was the ba like Ballast Point Sculpin um having that and then breaking away from there and going and trying their different fruited ones like the grapefruit one they grapefruit yeah. one they have the habanero one they have like all the different varieties of that and then from there you kind of build into like okay well what's big around me and then the hype game kind of gets <laughs> yeah becomes a part of it and it's like oh i heard this one's really good and it's hard to get and then it's kind of up to you to decide whether or not the hype is worth it <laughs> that's like for me uh so when i've gone to um I've been fortunate enough to go to a few like brew pubs and, and breweries. And uh, I think one of the first brew pubs I went to was 21st Amendment which, in San Francisco. The first time I went there. And had I known this back then, um, that Russian River Brewing Company was out there, I would have found it. I, I stumbled upon my White Whale beers in a convenience store, walking the streets of San Francisco uh this is back in october of this year of no of 19 and i've walked in and all of a sudden i see in the cooler they have pliny the elder just sitting there like bottles and bottles of it and like i've been trying to get pliny the elder for years to try it because it's so it was so hyped that this was like the goat for ipas so i bought yeah. two bottles and i had it and you know when they say like you meet a celebrity and it like it lets you down like it was yeah. good but like i i don't know i've had other beers that i think are better yeah yeah no, i know i understand that that's the whole hype that's the hype thing i mean i'm sure it's a really good beer but you know there's so much there's so much hype i i mean with the because i had had other going back to to the fuzzy with other with new england i had had other beers by them but i had heard of fuzzy baby dog couldn't get my hands on it because i don't think they were canning it yet at the time um so you had to kind of find be at a bar when it was there and then like apps came out to help you kind of look track down beers and stuff like that but um i remember my my friend's bar in uh, norwalk got it at one point it was probably back like 2015 16 and uh I so wanted to not be disappointed <laughs> and I wasn't, it was really good. So it's one of those beers that like I know is consistently good. There's definitely been other hyped beers though that I've gone and, and, and tried them. It's like, I get it. Like, I guess it's good, but it like, I'd rather have something else. Yeah. Nothing is kind of, there, there, you, sometimes you get a reprieve if you go to a bar and you're familiar with people um, I've had it happen where you get a bartender who does a buyback or just says that one's on me, you know, doesn't happen often, but for those beers that you're like, ugh, you're like, I wish that one would be a buyback. <laughs> like somebody please take the money back and just let's try something different. Yeah. Yeah. That's sometimes if you, if there's a beer that I've heard of and it's on, it's on tap, um, I'll ask to try it, I'll give it a sip and it's like, okay, I, I like that. That's good enough. At least I'll go for a glass or <laughs> Eh, I could do I could do something else. I think one of my still to this day one of my favorite beer memories is uh, the seventy five minute IPA <laughs> at a uh, cask in in Stanford. That is probably yeah. was it in Stanford? No. Yeah, it was in it was the Cask Republic in Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> a sipper for the kid. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, it, what would be your opinion for somebody who's not exposed to craft beer to like, what would be your recommendation for a stepping stone to get into? And not um, cookie cutter ones, because those are just too easy. No, I, I would say, are you saying like a beer to try or? Yeah. Well, I think you first have to find your style like not everybody's going to be I, I think for me the ipa scene was easier to get into um because there is a lot of hype around it and there's a lot of big names and a lot of a lot of uh reviews and ratings and stuff i'm sure there are for others too i just didn't look into it as much when i got started um but find out a style you like and i would say 
stay local, like try your local stuff first, because I mean, that's kind of what the whole scene's about. Yeah. Supporting like the local, the local businesses and the, and the local uh, breweries, because they probably have some good options for you. Yeah. Um, I, I do say like, if you want to get into, I mean, like founders all day is, is just such an easy beer to drink. If you want to get into IPAs um, and it's light and you could throw them back pretty, what, <laughs> pretty easily. Hence the name all days, but like I always said that, um, like, okay, I've developed beer snobbery, but like when it came down to a tailgate, like I'm not above drinking a Bud Light or whatever, but the all days as a session IPA help with that. Like you can bring those to a tailgate and not be zonked. But I mean, if you drink all 15, yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe. <laughs> yeah. I've definitely gone all day drinking all days and, and still been okay on the back end. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's definitely a solid session that you can get your hands on almost everywhere and, you know, not feel like you just ate like 15 bagels after you, uh, I like that you drank it. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not drinking beer and going to run a marathon. It's just not. Although <laughs> you might could. be onto something there. <laughs> It wouldn't be bad. An all day per mile. Twenty six. Okay. <laughs> Twenty. Oh. Yeah, that would be pushing it a little bit. It would be a lot bit. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Well, I we could do a founders all day five k. That's I've not seen. Bad. There's there are. I know, races I know there, there are beer runs, but like yeah, if founders really wanted to throw their hat in the ring. <laughs> And be like, because they're, they're, what, they're in New Hampshire? Uh, I think they're Michigan. Really? Yeah, I think they're Michigan. Why am I thinking New Hampshire? Let's see. Pull out the Googles. Yep. Grand Rapids. I am old enough. Been old enough for 10 years. <laughs> That's actually, I've noticed lately, um, especially with like the curbside pickups, uh, if you go to the websites, it's always going to ask you, are you old enough to, to drink? If you go to the, um, they're like temporary curbside order sites, they don't ask you that. Yeah. I, <laughs> so, like I said, I got lucky. I got a uh, bonus six pack. Thanks to the people at Bottle King. I, I don't know what happened or if there's somebody else named with the last name Blakely that I don't know that went to Bottle King, but I'm the only Blakely besides my dad in this, you know, that's ordering beer. So they screwed up and it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it basically afforded me another day of beer. That's There you go. I'm actually running well right now. I, I have a, a run coming up this week, like I said, but... So what do you do in terms help. of like pick up during this like whole situation? Do you just like schedule pickups from places or do you go to one place? Um, so we did the run up to New England. I did the run up to New England. It's probably about two and a half weeks ago now, maybe three weeks. Um, where put the order in. Um, anytime, anytime that that they come out with fuzzy baby ducks, I'll, I'll run up there or try to get my hands on maybe every other time. Cause sometimes I'm working not right now, but yeah. Um, so, and then I'll grab whatever else they have on. If they came out with something new, I'll try that. Um, obviously if the brewery's open, you go inside and you drink it and then right. you can decide if you like it with this time. I, I purchased some of their other stuff, which their, uh, their new double stegosaurus is very good. <laughs> and one of, one of my, uh, my favorite beers that they've come out with in a while. So dangerous. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a little dangerous for a double. Um, <laughs> they um, So we did that one. Um, and then I also stopped that same day at Half Full, which is literally, you know, probably a five-minute drive from us. Okay. So how, full, um, how far is uh, Nebco from here? Uh, that's about a 40-minute. It's about a 40-minute drive. That's commitment right there. You drove 40 minutes round trip. So 40 minutes there, 40 minutes back. Yeah. So a two hour trip basically by the time you get the stuff in the car, out of the car to get beer. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, it was a Friday, like mid afternoon. So my wife was working. And I didn't have anything else I was going to be doing. So why not? Um, That's true. And my brother lives about 15, 20 minutes from there. So they actually also stopped in. I, I picked up some beer. So we picked, coordinated that it was at the same time. So I got to see them and, and my niece so kind of briefly. So uh, yeah, from six feet away. <laughs> but they uh so that was nice but yeah typically that'll be a trip where like we coordinate if we're gonna go visit them we'll try and you know if the, if this is available or if anything is available we'll stop in there on the way up um as you know my bachelor party was <laughs> was at my yeah. brother's house last year and and uh, I know, a group so, of us I'm met so there annoyed. we hit so much traffic going up there um 84 it's 84 right you guys took 84. The Merritt and 95 are the kind of the Southern Connecticut roadways, which would that it's have right been off. Extra option? It would have been, you would have hit so much track. You would have been way longer trip if you did that. Okay. Yeah. So I've gone on 84 multiple times because that's now where um, Marissa's, my wife's uncle, uh, they live up off of um, one of the lakes up there by uh, right, right where one of the jails is. It's like Candlewood Lake? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Candlewood yeah. Lake. And um, so we take 84. But if you hit 84 at a certain time. Well, it's in the summertime on a Friday afternoon. If you try to drive on 95 or the Merritt Parkway, which run pretty much parallel through, through this part of Connecticut. And then as you get further north, the Merritt kind of breaks north towards Hartford. Um you're in traffic at like one, two o'clock in the afternoon and it's not stopping till after rush hour. So that's kind of what happened that day. And it took us that day. It took us well over an hour, probably closer to two hours to get from here to the brewery. And and we just kind of picked that as a spot for everybody to meet before we did anything else. And and unfortunately you guys got caught up in the travel and, and didn't make it, but I, I believe I, I grabbed you a growler of G bot or something like that. Yeah. So. And, and then we went through axes. So yeah, that was, and we brought more beer. We brought more beer to throw axes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how these places have liability insurance because <laughs> drinking and throwing hatchets and axes is just. There was also not a lot of like regulation. Monitoring. Yeah. yeah, it was. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> this is the we best way to throw your axe. We could have basically William Tell that whole time, like put a beer can on top of somebody's head and be like, I'm going to throw this. And they would have been like, yeah, okay, go, that, go do it. <laughs> apparently i was trash talking quite a bit during that during that <laughs> it was it was a uh it's an interesting thing to learn how to do and it was fun and you know we drank a lot of beer yeah a lot of beer, lot of beer. but didn't that's good we have the, didn't we have the duck pins there was like duck pin bowling no duck pin ipas didn't Jeff. Oh yeah, Judd. Yeah, Jeff brought them up from from Maryland. Yeah, another good beer. Duck pin IPA, right? It's uh, yeah. There's duck pin and double duck pin. Uh, I think it was duck pin that he brought. I forget the brewery name. I'm gonna Google it. But it is. It's one it. of. Yeah. Uh, Union. You, yeah. Which was like right next door to where he lived, right? I think. I think it's. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, I I remember one of the times going down there and like pre-trip kind of planning for beer. Like that was a beer that I was interested in. Having. Kind of had read to go to go grab. I re that was the trip where actually I got the. Uh, well, it's, it's the, a pale ale, not an Indian pale ale. Okay. The um, we walked into the liquor store. They had the main beers. They had a, another one and lunch and those beers in there. And I was like, whoa, like we we don't always see these up north. I'm gonna grab them now. Yeah. Hey, that's a fun part of traveling with beer. It's like seeing something that you don't normally get. And like you said, drinking local, supporting local. Yeah. Well, I think it's a uh, high time we wrap it up. We will do this again. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always fun talking about beer, especially while you're drinking, drinking some of it. Yeah. I mean, yes, sir. Thank cheers. you for including me. Thank you for joining Air, me. Virtual cheers. We'll make this uh we'll make this a regular thing. Yeah. I'm in. Bye. Bye. Bye.